This video is related to our course JS in Archaeology and specifically we start here with the introductory part. For all the later videos and also for this one um, I will only explain the technical part in the videos and not the theoretical part so I will jump here from in our presentation directly to the slide where we can download the files that we then would like to show in the JS. And what we are doing here is uh, we will uh, map one vector layer and one raster layer as a background map that we have already available as files. And to get these files on your computer, on the slide you can click on the, these two links. So the first link will down you, download you a file that's called point.zip and in this file we will have our vector layer. And the second link is the background TIFF and this is the raster layer. Um, okay, when you have done that you will have the files in your download folder and it, this depends on the operation system that you're using. So in my case the folder is just here downloads and I can see now the background TIFF and the points.zip. Okay, now we have all the data that we need to work and the next thing is that we have to open G QJS. Here is just an image that shows how the icon would look like on the desktop of a Windows computer. How you open QJS again depends on your operation system. In my case I can use some kind of search function and if I type in the command for starting JS then it pops up here. So in my case, you can see this um, this user interface. I might look different in your cases. This is the newest version of QJS uh, Pi, but you probably have already older uh, versions. And also, um, how it looks like depends on if you have used that before, if you have uh, specific um, plugins already installed. So it might look a bit different. But nevertheless, the general structure will be the same as long as you're in the QGIS free horizon, then um, the functionality should be accessible, kind of like we have now in the video. Okay, let's start. And for starting, we need a new project. I have already here a new project, but I would like to make a real start really from a blank slate. So for doing that, I click here on new project or in Deutsch Neues Projekt. And now this central screen will be emptied and we can start from scratch. Okay, as I said, we want to import two layers, one vector layer and one raster layer, and I will start with the vector layer. To import it, we need to um, open up the menu here, the layer menu, and there is uh, the point layer hinzufügen or add layer and here is add vector layer or vector layer hinzufügen. When I click that I get to this view of uh, data source management Datenquellenverwaltung and you can see here on the right uh, on the left sorry on the left there are different options. We currently care only for vector and for raster and if I click up here to layer, add layer and raster layer, I would get kind of the same window here, but then raster would be highlighted. Okay, but we would like to start with vector. Okay, now here the main interesting uh, line here is this source line. And here you can now enter the name of the layer that you would like to open if you would have uh, be already in the working directory. But since we don't know at which path your file, your downloaded file is, it's most convenient to click on this three dots button to the right and then your file management um, screen will pop up again depending on your operating system. In my case with Linux it looks like that. And I'm already here pointed to my downloads folder. 
um, you have to search for this download folder or wherever you have downloaded these files. And now I can directly click on this points.zip. That's something that I, that I only uh, recognized during working for the course here. Um, QJS is now smart enough to open a zip file and extract the different um, informations that are stored in the zip file. In the next video, uh, probably or in a later video, we will explain how these vector files are actually organized. Currently, we don't care. We just click to the points.zip and click on open. And now we have the path to this file here in this text field. Next thing I have to click is add or hinzufügen. And you might wonder that this uh, dialog stays here. Nothing seems to have changed, but if you look closer here, I can see already a small point. So the layer is actually added. You can also see that here to the left, where on the layer panel, I can see now my points layer visible. Um, the reason that this behaves like that is that you probably would like to add more vector layers or more other layers um, within one go. So this is why this dialog is not closing automatically. To close it down, you have to click explicitly here on close. And then we can see here our individual points. There they are. Next thing we would like to add is the raster layer, the background layer. To do so, again, we click on layer, add layer, and this time raster layer. And the process is the same. Um, here in source, we specify where our raster layer should come from. Again, in my case, it's the download folder. I click on OK, click on add, and close the dialog again. And now we can see here a bit distorted this background image, this background map that we can use. And since we don't see our points any longer, we can click and drag and drop the background layer below the points. And now they are there. So not very well visible, but here are some points that represents the data that we would like to map. For the first video, we leave it for this. So now we have seen how you can easily add layers to your map. And in the next video, we'll talk about how you can style the points that, for example, they are better visible here on your background map.